Hello everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages again with another Civic Citizenship. Remember, all the questions I ask throughout these videos shown with quotation marks are official questions from the USCIS Naturalization Civics Test. For more information about that process or the tests, check out the link I provided here. Today, we're going to learn about the branches of government. What do I mean by branch? Well, look at this tree. You have a trunk, the thick part at the bottom, which divides into smaller sections as the tree grows. Those smaller sections may divide several times into still smaller and smaller parts, eventually sprouting leaves all over. Those sections or parts are the branches. This word is also often used metaphorically to talk about things that are not trees, including government. In the United States, our government is divided into three main branches, which, like with a tree, are then divided into smaller and smaller departments. But all you have to worry about now are the three big ones. So try and answer this official USCIS question for me. Name one branch or part of the government. As you can see in the text, you only have to know one but I'm going to give you all three branches now. They are the legislative branch, judicial branch, and executive branch. Repeat them with me. Legislative, legislative, judicial, judicial, executive, executive. What do they actually do? Well, legislative comes from Latin lex legis, the word for law. Legal is also from that same root, so that should help you remember. The legislative branch makes laws. They write them up and try to vote them into existence. The judicial branch, on the other hand, looks at existing laws, compares them to related ones, considers new evidence, and ultimately judges whether the laws are legal. Should they be allowed to exist, or do they conflict, go against older rulings? Most importantly, the Constitution. Finally, the executive branch executes the law. And by this, I don't mean they kill anyone, although that is the most common use of that verb nowadays. Execute can also mean to carry an action out, make sure that something gets done. So the executive branch get stuff done. It's in charge of education, transportation, immigration, a little bit of everything. So again, legislative, judicial, executive. These are the formal names of the branches of government. That being said, this question is worded so vaguely, so generally, name one part of the government, that you actually have lots of different options for answering it. Here are a few more answers recommended by the USCIS guide. Congress, okay, that's what we call the, the, the legislative branch, another word for it. The courts, the judicial branch is made of, of legal courts. And then the president is the head of the executive branch. So these are all good answers for this question. So let's explore a little more deeply. Keep in mind that I will eventually create separate videos for each of these branches. There are a lot of questions about each. There's a lot to know. But for now, a general rundown will help you understand the basics of how our government operates and in turn, explain some of the things you hear in the news every day. Your next question is, who makes federal laws? Now by federal, I mean laws that uh, affect the entire federation the entire country or nation, okay? So this is different than state laws or local laws, which will be the subject of my next video, okay? So who makes federal laws? Who is in Washington, D.C. creating laws? Well, the legislative branch. Uh, if you wanna say that a little bit more shortly, you can say the legislature. Repeat that after me. Legislature. Legislature. 
legislative, that I-V-E ending is an adjective ending. It's even at the end of adjective itself. Okay, so um, by saying legislature, that's an actual noun. So legislative branch, legislature. If you want to say it even more shortly, Congress. We call our legislature Congress. Whereas, for example, in the United Kingdom, they say Parliament. We have Congress. Okay, Congress is divided into two separate parts, the Senate and the House of Representatives. So again, we'll talk about that more in detail later. That's not a shorter version. <laughs> so that is a more complete answer. But if you just want to say Congress or the legislator, um, that'll be fine. Here's another question for you. Who is in charge of the executive branch? I actually already gave you the answer to this one. So let's see if you were paying attention. The president. The president is not the only person in the executive branch, not by a long shot, but he is the most famous, for better or worse. He represents the entire section and is ultimately responsible for making sure that everyone else is doing their job. That's a lot of responsibility. Moving on to a new question, who signs bills to become laws? Well, we know that the legislature creates laws, technically called bills, until they are official. But did you know that the president actually signs them? Once they become official, with that signature, after all, they do become his responsibility. He's the one in charge of making sure they get done. So this is an important, if symbolic, gesture of responsibility being passed from one department to the next. How about this question? Who vetoes laws? First of all, what is a veto? Kind of important, right? Well, it's basically a rejection. When Congress approves a bill, they pass it on to the president to sign into law, right? But he also has the right to veto it, saying no, that he does not want it to become official. This doesn't mean that the bill is completely defeated. It goes back through Congress and can be voted on again and eventually approved, but it does make life much more difficult for those involved. Many bills that are vetoed do not survive the process. This power is just one more way of balancing the branches, giving the executive branch a say in what it will be enforcing. Here's another question. And the answer couldn't possibly be the president again, right? Who is the commander in chief of the military? Okay, I lied. It is the president. Wow, that is a lot of power, isn't it? It means that a man in this position can do a lot of good or a lot of damage. The beauty of the three branch system, however, is that there are many powers he does not have. The president is not all powerful. We call this checks and balances, and it is what's made our system work so well for so many years. About 230 years old, it is one of, if not the, oldest governments still in operation today. Finally, one last question for you. What does the judicial branch do? Well, the court system reviews laws, explains laws, and very importantly, resolves disputes. That means that if two parties are fighting or arguing, they can't agree on whether something should be legal or not, the judicial branch gets to make that decision. Those judges have the final word. No one in Congress, nor even the president, can ignore their decision. The biggest judgments usually revolve around deciding whether a law goes against the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. You'll need to know that for another question. To put it another way, they decide if a law is unconstitutional or not. All right, practice makes perfect. Name the three branches of the federal government. One last time, let's make sure you got all three of them. They are the legislative, judicial, and executive 
branches. Got all that? Good. Thank you, as always, for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. And until I see you next time, have a wonderful, healthy, safe rest of your day.